Rob from Hobzine.com. Thanks for joining me for what's going to be my first ever video blog. It's, it's kind of a re response video, but I think it's just a nice idea. Uh, Nick Cook over at uh, Beer Haller uh, Beer Reviews, he started doing these things called Beer Chat. And, he's, and I really like it. His, his intention is all about kind of creating some kind of community within our little kind of little beery world. I mean, there's a group of us in the, the UK who keep in touch on, on a quite a regular basis, have a beer, have a chat over Google Plus. But I mean, one of the things that I really love about doing this kind of thing, it is all to do with that um, community, and it goes back to uh, why I was part of certain kind of music scenes over the years. It was it's all about shared experience and kind of sharing your passion with each other. So Nick's question on his first uh, beer chat, as he's calling it, uh, was how did you discover kind of real ale, craft beer, whatever? And how I'm going to kind of cover that is I'm going to cover two ways. First off. It's the first ever alcoholic drink I ever had. So clearly I had it right from the start, because the first beer, first alcoholic beverage I ever touched was Newcastle Brown Ale. And that was bought, uh, I was probably about 15. Uh, I was, uh, it was bought from a, a little corner shop in Crofton where I went to school, just a couple of miles from where I grew up. And um, it was one of those experiences where you had to kind of get, really get built up and really kind of worried about what you were doing. It's like, oh, fuck, I'm looking first. I'm buying, buying alcohol, I'm not old enough. So it was really kind of like, oh, no, shit, what, what's going to happen? So, oh, sorry, I'm just looking around, looking for bottle owner. It's there. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of like quite a scary moment, I guess. And then we, none of us had a bottle opener. And why would you at 15? Um, so it was kind of like prized open on the edge of a, of, of, of a sign for, for the road we were on, just a little kind of like little, little wooden kind of sign at the, at the side of the road. Um, and I remember getting bits of the wood off the bottle in my teeth and I'm sure a bit got in the bottle and it was a bit, uh, it was this warm bottle of Newcastle brown ale. And to be honest, if I've had it again, I've had it once. But I don't remember that and it was probably at players um, snooker club, well, which it was so, so called a snooker club, but it was where uh, they put gigs on, where uh, in the in Wakefield where I grew up, um, and that's where all the alternative kind of people kind of hung out. And so I might have had it there, but it might this might be the first time in about twenty years that I've had this beer. So let's get it into the glass. I'm just I'm not going to give you kind of a review like no, I'm not going to kind of go through tasting notes like crazy. But it's going to be an interesting uh, revisitation. Because since then, I've been to Newcastle a few times, never had Newkey Brown whilst there. And it's going to be an interesting experience. Is it going to be bloody awful? I don't think it's brewed in Newcastle anymore. How many brown ales are in um, clear bottles these days? I don't know, not many. But Actually, since then, uh, from drinking like craft beer, I have become quite fond of uh, brown ales. So, this is going to be a bit of a water down memory lane, hopefully not quite the same, so let's have a sniff. Yeah, it's got kind of that kind of like, it's got a bit of suede socks. It's got uh, quite a lot of kind of demerara sugar. That kind of thing, slightly minerally. It's one of those beers that I'll go to to gigs and there'll be um, there'll be crap lagers on draft, and sometimes and then there'll be like cans of Red Stripe and bottles of Newkey Brown in the fridges or at like bowling alleys and stuff like that. But I've never bothered. But it's all right actually. Thinking back now, I mean, I'm sure I didn't like the taste, but. It's not bad, it's not bad at all that actually. I've had a lot worse craft beers, craft beers, whatever they may be. And certainly a lot of bad real ales. And the other beer in question, which I've picked up for this little blog, is um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Um, I guess this is the one that kind of moved me towards uh, kind of good beer, uh, whatever you want to call it, real ale, ca um, craft beer, all that kind of business. But I guess after drinking Newcastle Brown in Crofton on the roadside, warm, um, 
I kind of went, you know, as most people do, you drink a lot of crap lager, you drink, you get pissed in nightclubs, stuff like that. And, but I guess as, as someone who's interested in flavours and new experiences and things like that, I um, I started drinking kind of better lagers uh, and, and kind of and going to kind of German beers and then I'd go to certain pubs and they'd have um, so good good kind of ice beers and I got into that, I drank a lot of Erdinger for quite a while, um, kind of Maisel Weiss, Schneider Weiss, all that kind of thing. And then these pubs often had Belgian beers, so I'd drink Delirium, which was one of the more common ones, and Orval, and maybe a bit of Chimay, a bit of uh, um, Rochefort on the occasion. But I think I was attracted to um, um, Delirium because the bottle looked bonkers. It looked, it isn't stone anymore, but it was like a white stone with a uh, with um, kind of pink elephants all over it, so it looked quite appealing. But um, then I, um, I, I guess I'd be going in North Bar when it first opened, and they uh, they'd have a few American beers, maybe a bit of Brooklyn Lager, uh, Honkers and, and IPA from uh, Goose Island, Anchor Steam. I remember buying a, a local off license, and this Sierra Nevada Pale Ale was one of those along with those which kind of appeared, and this one really appealed to me. I mean, somebody who's been drinking lager and wee beers, and, but you mean an experiment with something a little bit more interesting. Um, I remember having Anchor Steam and not loving that, and first kind of first time Punk IPA appeared in shops. Remember having that and not being kind of that bit a bit too much for me. But this really resonated with me. The Sierra, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. It's one. It's a beer that I will happily say before I was a, a, a massive snob like I am now. I would have um, just drank out of the bottle. And I always remember, and I still remember now, thinking the bottle always tastes better even than the, the, the keg, which is kind of like around nowadays. So I guess it is that kind of iconic pale ale. It is the icon of pale ale. When I brew pale ales, um, uh, I use um, uh, SO5, which is supposedly a derivative of um, um, Sierra Nevada yeast, so California pale ale yeast, and this is, it's the it's the benchmark of kind of perfect pale ale. But it's a long time since I've had this, to be honest. See, that, that's what you'd be dealing with. It's exactly what you'd hope for. Beautiful head retention, nice bit of orange. Oh, lovely aroma. I mean, it's it's got that oh wow why do I not buy this beer more often it's got one of the aromas that I love about beer and that is that kind of tin mandarins I remember my grandma used to always keep tin fruit under the fr under the sink and she'd have cans of pop in there we'd go in and get us cans of pop you'd always notice that um, that those tins of mandarins have that wee bit of tip top maybe but it's got such a memorable aroma Anyway, let's let's waffle. I'm going to have to dig into this because I had one in ages. So cheers, cheers, Nick. So oh, it's a nice idea. I'm glad I'm I'm happy to be involved in it. Anyway, cheers, mate. I met Nick. At thing, if, if anybody who's watching who didn't give a shit, I met Nick at um uh, at GBBF this year. He's he's massive. He's even bigger than Dave. He's a big brute of a man. And um, also, I think he's about 25, which makes me feel like an old old man. Anyway, cheers, Nick. <laughs> It's insane. It's such a beautiful beer. This beer is um, imported by a, primarily by a company in uh, not a million miles away from me called Vertical Drinks, which is based in Kirkstall in Leeds. And if you buy if you buy um, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale or probably Sierra Nevada beers anywhere in Europe, it is coming via a company. Well, it's not sitting here because there's so much of it coming over but it's all orchestrated by a company which is kind of in my my neck of the woods to so to speak so it's quite a proud thing to say yeah so you're it's a west yorkshire company who is supplying sierra nevada pale ale to europe and it is a beautiful beer it's got it's got a lovely element of hot uh, hot flavor the bitterness is absolute perfection. It is a, 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 an absolute modern classic, a cornerstone of craft beer. It is a wonderful thing. And I guess even sitting here now and being reminded how wonderful this beer is, it does make me think, yeah, this is why. This is why I drink these beers. This is why, I mean, p 
personally, the main beers that I drink are IPA and uh, Pale Ale. It's what I like. And this is exactly what I look for. Mm. It is it's absolute perfection. Two interesting beers, two massively different beers, two sides of the um, Atlantic, I guess. I'm at, I'm at the Nuki Brown end of the Atlantic. They're at the, um, the beer that I love, the beer that kind of inspires me, the beers that I search out for are at the other end of the uh, other side of the Atlantic. So I guess it really kind of sums up my kind of drinking experience and how I kind of developed a passion for, uh, real, uh, for ale. Real ale, craft beer, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I could, I, I'm not going to get into like uh, cask ale and all that business now because that's a long, longer, more boring story. So <laughs> I won't get into that. But anyway, Nick, nice idea, mate. And I'll, I'll toast you farewell. I'll pour myself a little bit more of this wonderful Sierra Nevada pale ale. Check out Nick on 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 Twitter. Not on Twitter. On, on Facebook, he's Nick Cook, and also on um, on YouTube. Uh, beer Haller, Beer Reviews. He's only done about five or six reviews. He's a really, really good guy. He's at the early stages of doing this kind of malarkey. I think he does a really good job. Anyway, cheers Nick and cheers to everybody and I'll see you next time. Cheers.